What is going on everyone, I'm Adriano and this video is about how to query a table in Redshift using a SQL query in Python. This video will be demonstrating how to achieve this using the AWS SDK for pandas, which will return our data as a pandas data frame. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to connect to a Redshift cluster in Python, use SQL to pull values from a single table, use a WHERE statement to limit how much data we are querying, use Python variables in our SQL statement, and how to query multiple Redshift tables with a join and return the results. If you want to follow along with me in your own environment, a couple of prerequisites for this tutorial are a Redshift database, you should know what the database URL to connect to is, having a Redshift user with read access to a Redshift database to the table you want to query. You have already added your database credentials to either AWS Secrets Manager or AWS Glue as a database connection, Python version 3.8 or greater, and installed the AWS SDK for pandas. All right, so I'm in my Jupyter Notebook here, and the first step is to import the Python libraries that we need. So the first library is AWS Wrangler, which is also known as the AWS SDK, and we're going to be using this to connect and read data from our Redshift cluster. Second, we're going to need the Boto3 connection in order to create a session to connect to our Redshift cluster. And the other library I need is OS in order to retrieve any environment variables that I might have. All right, so let's go ahead and create our Boto3 session. So just pasting my code in here, what you can see is I'm using os.environment.get to get the session name. If you don't set this, it's going to use your default profile. However, on my machine, I have multiple profiles in my credential file and I wanna specify which one to use. So I'm retrieving this through my environment variables. Second is to actually create the session. So I'm passing in the profile name, which I've called above, the region name, which is US East one. So let's just give that a run. And now we have an active Boto3 session, which is in our Boto3 session variable. All right, next step, we wanna actually connect to our Redshift cluster. So in order to do this, we need to pass in our Glue database connection string. So we can connect in two ways, either by using our Glue database connection string or by using the secrets manager. If you don't know where to set this up, I'm just gonna show you quickly. So if we're in the AWS Glue service under connectors, and if you scroll down to the very bottom under connections, this is where we can find the name of the connection that will have the information to our database. Now I have a separate video on how to create this connection, so I'll include a link in the description below. All right, so next is we're going to be using the wrangler.redshift.connect. So we're passing in the string and the Boto3 connection we created earlier. So let's just give that a run. And if there was no errors, we've successfully connected to our Redshift database. Great. Now that we have an active Redshift connection, we can now query our Redshift table using SQL. So I'm just going to paste my pre-made query here, and it's a very simple query. So I'm just going to do select star from our table category underscore one from the public schema. So I'm using the read underscore SQL query method. Now this allows us to pass SQL queries to our Redshift database. So the two mandatory parameters we need to pass is the first one, which is SQL. So this is going to be our SQL query. And the second one, it's going to be the SCON, which is going to be our Redshift connection we've created earlier. So if we now run this query, we now see we have successfully returned everything from our category underscore one table. So you can see in this table, we have our categories, which is going to be sports, concerts, and then a description of it. Great. So let's dive in a little bit more into the SQL query side of it. So now let's go ahead and add a where statement to our query. So again, we're going to be using the read underscore SQL underscore query method. Now, instead of just doing select all from the public dot category underscore one table, we're going to add where category ID is equal to six. So when I run this query, we should see we're only getting one record or any records where the category ID is equal to six. So now what we see here is our pandas data frame is only returning one record and you can see that it is musicals. The category name is musicals related to theater. All right, so now let's cover how we can pass parameters to our SQL query. So a lot of the times we're not just gonna be hard coding a query, we want it to be dynamic. So maybe you wanna query by date range or a different values depending on what's triggering your Python script to run. So in order to do this with the AWS Data Wrangler SDK, what we're going to be doing is using a parameter which is optional called params. So 
here in our first line of this block of code, I've defined cat underscore ID is equal to six. So you can either have this dynamically being generated from another script or being calculated in your Python code. And what you see here is instead of calling this variable directly, I'm using percent %s. So what happens is this becomes the first parameter value in our parameter list here. So as you can see here, cat ID is being called um, in this list. And what this allows us to do is safely inject our variables into our SQL query. If we do not do this, and let's say we added a force and did it this way, you know, this technically can work. However, we're opening up our code to SQL injection, which is not a good idea if you're going to be making this API open to the public. So in order to protect ourselves from that, we're just going to use percent %s. Right, so if we print our query here, now you see we've dynamically passed in our variable value into our SQL query. Great, and the last thing I wanna show you is how we can actually query multiple tables with a SQL join. So a lot of the time, you know, with the power of leveraging SQL in Redshift is maybe you need to join across multiple databases and we can do this with AWS Data Wrangler as well. So all we're gonna do now is our SQL query becomes a little bit more complex uh, I'm calling out specific columns from the different tables that I want to join here. So uh, instead of just doing select star, I've passed in the event ID, event name. Uh, I've called out the category ID specifically from one of the tables that I'm joining to. And here we're going to be getting debt values from the event table, doing an inner join to public dot category underscore one. And the join criteria is going to be on cat ID. And we're also adding a where statement saying, okay, let's show me where the category ID is going to be equal to six. So as you can see from the query above, it stays the same. We're only using the three parameters. And if we run this query, we now have multiple columns coming in from both tables. And what we can see is we have an event. We can see that based on our musical category, these are the different musicals that happened at various events. Well, I hope this tutorial was helpful for querying data in Python using the AWS SDK for Pandas. Thanks so much for watching, and if you thought this video was helpful for you or think it will be helpful for others, please hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos on working with data on AWS. Thanks again, and see you next time.